It is the afternoon of March 12, 2004, when the police are called to a child custody dispute, which would result in Marcus Wesson slaughtering his entire family in what would be considered the worst mass murder in Fresno history. Marcus Wesson was born in 1946 into a very religious family. He was raised throughout his childhood as a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. When he was 17, he dropped out of high school and joined the army. He served his time and left the army with an honorable discharge. He then moved to San Jose, California, where he met Rosemary Maturina. Wesson moved in with her and her eight children, and soon they had a son together. Sometime after his son was born, Wesson began to have an intimate relationship with Maturina's daughter, Elizabeth, who was eight years old at the time. Her mother approved of this relationship and only asked that they wait until Elizabeth was 15 years old in order to get married. Four months after their marriage, Elizabeth gave birth to their first child. They went on to have 10 more children together. During this time, Elizabeth's sister left her seven children in the care of Wesson and Elizabeth because she was unable to care for them due to a drug addiction. Wesson was extremely abusive to his wife and children. He prevented Elizabeth from participating in the children's upbringing. He insisted on keeping the girls away from the boys, and all of the children were permitted from speaking to their mother. The children were homeschooled by Wesson. He used flashcards, school textbooks, and his own twisted knowledge to teach the children. He also taught the children from a handwritten Bible that focused on Jesus Christ being a vampire. He taught his children that he was God and that he was to be referred to as Master or Lord. Along with these teachings, he also taught the girls that they were destined to become his wife. During their childhood, the children were given strict rules to follow, and if anyone disobeyed, they would be beat. He would beat them with tree branches, cords, baseball bats, or his fists. One of his sons recalls being beat for 30 days straight for stealing a spoonful of peanut butter. Along with the physical abuse, Wesson also sexually abused two of his daughters and three of his nieces at the age of nine, resulting in all of the girls at some point becoming pregnant. He had wedding ceremonies held at the house where the girls would place their hands on the Bible and recite marriage vows. Wesson was unable to hold a steady job and instead relied on welfare and scavenging in order to survive. Once the children started to work, they were required to give him their paycheck. The family would live in rundown shacks, boats, tents, and vacant houses. At one point, even living in a 26-foot boat in the Santa Cruz Harbor. While on the boat, the children were forced to stay below deck in fear of people seeing the children and questioning why they were not at school. The family was finally able to buy a rundown office building that they used for housing instead. By this time, the children that were old enough to live on their own did just that. The only adult children that were left in the house were two of his daughters and one niece. They stayed in order to help around the house and to take care of the seven children. On March 12, 2004, Wesson was approached at home by Ruby and Sophina, who were his nieces that had previously ran away from home. They had come back with the support of other family members in order to collect their two children. Wesson was outraged and started screaming at them, calling them Judas and Lucifer. The girls left and came back with the police. The police talked to a compliant Wesson who asked if he could grab the kids and their things and say goodbye one last time. The police agreed and Wesson went back into the house for almost two hours. Elizabeth showed up at the scene and went inside the house. She opened the door to the back room and saw Marcus kneeling with his arm around their daughter. Wesson yelled for her to come here, but instead she ran out of the house. This is when SWAT was called. As they were circling the house, Wesson emerged from the house and surrendered, covered in blood. The police ran inside and were shocked to discover the bodies of nine people stacked in the corner of the room, each appearing to have been killed with one bullet to the eye. The bodies were stacked and so entwined in clothing that it took almost two hours to determine the number of dead bodies. The victims were those of Wesson's daughters, Sabrina, 25, and Elizabeth, 17, and seven of their children, all under the age of eight. The children included Illabella, eight, Aviv, seven, 
Jonathan 7, Ethan 4, Marshi 1, Leva 1, and Sedona 1. There was no evidence of a struggle or any kind of fight. It is believed that Wesson had a suicide pact with his daughter and niece, stating that if the family was to ever be broken up, they would kill the rest of the family and then themselves. Wesson was convicted of nine counts of first-degree murder and 14 counts of forcible rape and molestation of his seven daughters and nieces. He was sentenced to death on June 27, 2005, and now resides in San Quentin State Prison to live out the rest of his life. The link for the extended version will be in the description below. This is 5-Minute Crimes. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.